Hello everybody, welcome to the first edition of the West Australian Poker Show. My name is Darcy Trainer. We're trying to get the dog out of focus, but we've given up on that. So this is Scott's dog. This is um, Currently, we've got a Poker Stars online session ready to go. Scott's just controlling the, uh, the camera. I've got a rundown. We're sort of winging it at this stage, but uh, basically the Poker Show is... It is what it is, the Poker Show. Myself and Scott are both... Regular poker players. Um, we're going to try and get a show going that sort of promotes poker, especially within WA. Hopefully, get some of the WA leagues involved. Uh, we're not professionals. We're not going to pretend to be professionals or know what we're talking about. It's going to be very scratchy from the start. But bear with us. The idea of the first episode is going to be uh, we're just going to build our bankroll. Um, Scott's going to pretty much play online. And I'm just going to talk and ask him what he's doing, talk about the hand. We've got a few topics written down. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll introduce ourselves a bit more and how we got started in the poker scene. And yeah, we're just going to go from there. So Scott is going to come in and sort of introduce himself. Hey everyone. Hi. I'm Scott. And um, yeah, I'm part of the poker show with Darcy and Lee Matfield. And we are going to be playing some Poker Stars Texas Hold'em uh, 10 cent, 25 cent um, cash game. And yeah, so leave your comments with the Ask, uh, ask Poker Show cash, uh, hashtag. I better... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is a bit put together, a bit slapdash, but it's our first ever one, so go easy on us. And we're going to take it away now. We're just going to go out of the frame so you guys can see. Oh, well, you got it. And I'm back in the frame. Alright, so I got King right. Jack here. Um, I've got been raised. Now, I mean, I guess as we said at the top of the show, Scott, we're going to just build the bankroll. We're building for yeah. 20, which is not, we're not millionaires, we're just playing like a yeah, lot of I've just started, game. so I'm going to, I'm going to call here. I might, I might have three bet in if I had a bit more information, but... You know, I've got position on him. King Jack is a nice hand to see a flop with. Let's see what happens. Not a bad start. I like it. Now, I will be raising here. Um, so when you come to a new table, Scott, are you generally more tight to start with simply because you don't um, quite know what the players are going to be like or are you the opposite and you want to sort of set the tone and sort I like of to set dominate the, tone. the total a bit? I like to set the tone. I like to sort of let people know that I'm not... Here for you know to be yeah. a, a neat bitch. Mm. Um, you know he could call over there with uh, Ace King very often. Mm. That's what I'm putting him on, like Ace King. I mean, if he's got so I, I've got to really make a strong bet here to sort of. Are we scared of that? Really heart see where I am. Not the heart. I'm not. I'm not concerned about the heart. I think about four twenty-five is the right area. Anywhere between four and five, I think is a pretty good bet. Mm, and I got it done. I think you're right, he might have even just had a jack. Yeah. So I mean, in this session we're going to aim for 50. That's mm. going to be the, the sort of goal. And then if we get to that, we'll rebuy in for 20. Um, we were discussing before, Scott, how sort of important it is that when you sit down in a poker session, yep. don't just sit down and play and then just bust. You want to have no. a target. Yeah, we're going to try and get up to 50. We bought yeah. in for 20 bucks. We had a little... Um, a little sort of mess around earlier. We won five bucks, so <laughs> we, we are up five bucks, um, and uh, yeah, we're up another three seventeen, which is better than a kick in the nuts. And so. I guess down the track, the idea is that hopefully we're going to get some interviews on the poker show and get some well-known WA players to come See, in think, and maybe. I think here is quite interesting. This is a good place to check because I do have the um, the nut mm. club. We got runner runner. That's just and, gone. Um, I don't think much changes here. Now I've got to really sort of see where I am. So I'll just put in 75 and I'll probably get it done, but obviously not. All right, so, so I think checking here is... is are we putting in pretty, on clubs with a call and then a check there? That's it. I think my ace high might be good. I'll, sometimes you'd bet this, but I'm feeling that ace high could probably get it done, and yeah. it does. I mean, the thing about betting on the, in that sort of spot is you're only getting called by what's beating you, aren't you? So is there any point in betting? Definitely. Um, yeah, no, like, yeah, you got showdown value. It's not great showdown value. I mean, you might get like a four to, um, not four, but like a, mm. you like a pair of pocket threes or pocket sixes or something like that to fold. Maybe like, 
but maybe even a better ace high might fold. Yeah, I mean, obviously we know what showdown value means, Scott. What, well, there what is any better ace highs out there? <laughs> but the, in terms of a definition, what is showdown value? Um, it sort of means, well, basically, I mean, if like you got to check it, the ability to win without having to put any more money in, like mm. winning with you know what you've got, what you've got, sort of the implied odds of what you actually represent in your hand. And um, she got some nice, nice cards. That's and not bad as well. I mean, I have to bet it because of the the hearts, and because you know someone with like a seven ten or a seven, mm -hmm. or even a ten or a seven, something like that could. Be. Like this is like an interesting spot. See, I, I would like, just fold because I, I, know I, was, I know you're on the button, but mm. I mean, what are you hitting? <laughs> exactly. It's 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 just a little bit too low. Like I mean, like something like an eight nine or a, you know. See, so this guy will probably win this hand, I think, right here. Mm. Maybe not. No, he was short stacked, I guess. Might be right, this is a three out of nut. See, the button, we were talking uh, before we started the show, Scott, about the button and how important it is. Do you, is it more important online than in real life, almost? Simply because um, it, it's, I mean, you don't have any information on these players, mm. so position is just so vital. I think live is probably a little bit more important because you do get to really study your opponent mm. act. Um, and I guess you... But I mean, 8-4, you, you thought about it online. Mm. Would you think about it in real life? Yeah, As much? I mean, I, I, I would say so. But, I mean, like, this position here is definitely a 3-bet th mm. three position for me. I mean, you're under the gun. Just not much, maybe like 150, like a minimum three there, but, you know, I've got position, I've taken the momentum of the hand away from him, mm. and I've got not a bad hand, I mean, ace-10, I mean, he could, he could fold ace-jack here, he could mm. fold sevens, eights, maybe. Is there a danger, I mean, <laughs> we've just started the show and I think we've won sort of four out of six hands or something like that, mm. is there a danger of, I mean, right now, and we're going to talk about image a bit later, and we've come in and won nearly every pot. Is the table starting to think, I mean, what are these guys doing? Are they just playing ridiculous? And is that sort of something to think about? See, so this is quite... Um... See, so obviously, you, not much you can do there. I don't think you... You can try a bluff it, but... Yeah, I don't think he was folding. He obviously had the hand. Uh... See, like, I don't really like the position, so... Mm. Sorry, what were you saying about the... I mean, just about image. And um, how, I mean, you've been pretty aggressive early, mm. with hands, of course. Yeah. But the rest of the table, I mean, we've just sat down and they're sort of thinking, who, who is this um, WA Poker Show account? Mm. Is that a good or a bad thing? Um, well, it's, it's, it's obviously going to be mixed. harder to harder to bluff, isn't it? Because they're yeah. going to be starting to think, well, hang on a minute, they kind of a hand every time. It's like on that last hand, when he was check calling, um, you know, that's what most players do against aggressive players like in when they've got top hand so yeah um you've got to sort of um yeah i mean you need your information on the other player like a lot of uh sort of aggressive players will play aggressive players aggressively yeah um but most sort of your, of your standard players you see i don't really like this spot i've got a player behind me I'm not in position. I'm just going to lay it down, I think, because... You fold sixes there. Well, See, I, again, I think it's worth a call. You have to, I mean, pairs are so hard to get pre-flop. True. I mean, like, you fold the set there. Mm, I guess, but <laughs> that was pretty nitty. <laughs> Bit nitty. I, I, I do. Was it simply the fact that you were just completely out of position and then... The razor was in position there, and that's. Um, I think I was just maybe a little bit shell shocked after losing the last hand, and I didn't want to look <laughs> like I was playing every hand. I mean, sometimes a fold is good for later yeah. on. I don't know. I mean, like I said, like we said before, that was what we were in right last hand. Mm. I was in, but um, like I said, we're, I'm not a professional. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to make yeah. mistakes, and please tell us about it. I mean, our, um, hashtag Ask the Poker Show. So on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, whatever you guys are watching this on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys can watch the the whole show and see what Scott does, and I might have a go a bit later. 
and just roast us if you like. You just tell us what you would do in that position. I mean, I definitely would have called with sixes there. Mm. I think Scott probably, you know, hindsight would have called as yeah. well. But I mean, even just if we'd raised too much or too less, or if there's a spot we could have checked, or just to, and tell us why. I mean, we don't mind being criticised, but also tell us why you would do that. Um, yeah. and, and see yeah. here, I can I can definitely see a opportunity to attack the blinds. Mm. King high is. Definitely okay. If I get these two to fold behind me. Maybe. See now, Martin's cold. Are you worried now? Um, I kind of felt like maybe he, it was like a a call because he was on the button. Um, mm. It could be like quite wide range there. Yeah, so it turns out you're right, but I mean, he didn't. It wasn't an instant call. He did have a little think about it. There are tells you can pick up on it online. Yeah. I think that people do sort of maybe not take mm -hmm. into account all the time. Hopefully, uh, we're, we're going to play for a little bit. Hopefully, these guys will stay at this table and we can perhaps pick up some mm. some patterns. And I think that yeah, you, it's very important to watch the other players. Like this guy, I'm thinking is quite aggressive. This guy, though these two seem pretty sort of standard ABC mm. kind of players, so just from the yeah. early days. And have, we spot, got, have we spotted got the fish yet? He's I mean, got a pretty little cat. <laughs> <laughs> Table in his door. Um, I feel as if maybe I'm the fish. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I mean, there's that quote from Rounders, the, the poker film, that basically says, if you can't find the fish, you are the fish. Mm. So are you already looking for, maybe not the fish, but the weaker player or the weaker players? Or is it too uh, early for that? I yeah, think it's or? a little early, but um, I, I'm also, I'm looking for the spots. You know, I'm looking for sort of... Yeah. Um, opportunities to punish weakness. A bit of hand, a big one. I mean, you got to defend, obviously. Mm. Just depends what um, Papier Mache does. So we've got the WA Poker Show account, Scott, as I think I said off the top. See, that's a dream flop. Now, do you check that and just see I, what he does? I definitely check it. I mean, uh, you basically got the nuts, so uh, no reason to beat him off it. I think he's, if he's like, yeah, he's, he's not going to... Are you just flooding that? Yeah. So, I mean... With a little bit of a Hollywood... Yeah, oh, I mean, obviously. Jesus. <laughs> now, that's a great <laughs> card, because I, I, I put him on well, a... Well, we're pen. just praying he's got an over pair, aren't we? Now I'm going to actually raise, because raising here actually looks kind of weak. Mm. It looks like I've maybe got tens or eights or sevens. And if he does yeah. have aces or... Queens or tens or something like that, he's gonna. Even though he might just get it in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, when you get quads, uh, I think when I started out playing Scott, I just I just check it. Because you're so scared to bet them off the hand. I think it's gotta be all in. I mean, if he's come this far, if he's yeah. obviously. Yeah, no, I agree. Something. Yeah. And it, it doesn't look like quads, does it? Yeah, it's a shame he folded. He mm. wants to know what he had, but. Bing bing! <laughs> it's the first quads on the poker. Uh, Oh well, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Right. We have twenty hands. We're already yeah, in quads. We're, we're doing okay here. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, we, I mean, you've got quads, and the old me would have just freaked out and just checked that, and probably won five dollars just because I'm scared of betting them off the hand. But I mean, you play for a bit longer, and you realise that you put them on a hand, mm. and you figure out how you, your betting looks to them. I mean, I don't think you look like quads at all then. Him. Mm. He probably thought you had, what, no, you, nine, mean, something like that. Maybe a full house, I think, he probably yeah. put you on, but... When I don't raise on the five, I feel like I have to raise on the turn. It's just because you want to get money in. I wanted, like, an almost yeah. hot-sized bet for all in on the river. Yeah. That's another thing. You see, on here, like, this is a really good three-bet spot. Because he's definitely ABC. Mm. I'm on the button with, like... I've got a king. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, you know, he's probably coming along, but a lot of the time he's folding like yeah. that because he can't take the pressure. So, but going back to the the quads, um, uh, just in yeah, terms I of wanted to, I wanted I wanted to set it up so on the river, I was a pretty much like a full size pot size bet was going to put me all in and get yeah. me maximum value. If he had aces or kings, for example, where he's definitely calling. I guess the other, I mean, he raised the turn. The scary thing, if you flat call the turn and it gets to the river, you have to check, don't you? Because it's not going to make any sense if you just go all in for, 
for twenty dollars into fifteen, that's going to look very suspicious. As opposed to raising, and now it's sort of on you to bet. Um, if he was a really aggressive player and I'd been playing a bit longer, I might have even checked the river after after raising. Mm. Like, but I found, I, I, you know, I, he's checking back like ninety nine times out of hundred there. Yeah. Even if he's got a hand, even if he's got a full book. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you've got position, position heads up, yeah, not a great right hand. Let's see, I've got a heart. This is not bad. He can easily um, slow down on the turn here. Yeah, this is where he slows down. And um, this is where I take the hand. Do you want to assume? <laughs> I think so. Thinking about it, has he got the heart? I don't think has he, he got slows the heart? down ever. So if he calls there, I, sh I shut down to completely. Yeah, even if he checks the river and it comes to you? Yeah, because he, he's, he's, he's angry at me yeah. at the moment. He, he kind of wants to play me. I've taken a, little, a couple of little pots off him. I re-raised him earlier um, pre-flop and he had to lay it down. Mm. So he's looking for a spot where he can trap me right now. And, you know, that would be a... That, that looks like a trap to me. If he yeah. if he calls there and then then checks river. Absolutely. So Scott, I mean, I said at the top that we were going to talk about sort of how we got into poker. Yep. Um, yourself. When did um, you start? Where? First, why? First time I fell in love with poker was late night poker nine ninety nine. Wow. When it came on SBS for the first time, I was just watching TV and on came this poker show where they showed the whole cards. I didn't really, I, I played like five card poker as a kid with some of my mates like when I was really young, like yeah. sort of eight or nine, ten, like we used to, you know, play with Monopoly money and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I knew like what hands were and that sort of thing. Like I knew what a full house was, I knew what a straight was and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, it was, uh, yeah, five card draw and um, yeah, uh, and then I saw uh, Late Night Poker and fell in love with it and like yeah. tagged it every week and then um, I got onto, I think, Free Money Poker on the Sun website, okay. the newspaper, English newspaper. <laughs> right. They had their, uh, their own poker, like a free free money thing and I um, I found like I ran it up to like, you know, two million, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, in free money and like I was, you know, doing really well with it and like... Sort of learning and playing, and you know, and back then I guess like not many people were playing, so it was kind of yeah. Like, I was no. going to mention. I mean, when I came, up, I'll let you finish your story. But when mm. I came into it, which was probably a year and a half ago, it wasn't quite the poker boom, but there was obviously definitely a lot more. I mean, there's four or five poker leagues in Perth yeah. now. Almost a hundred percent. There wasn't five poker leagues no, in Perth no, back when was, you started. There was none. The only time, so, the only way place you could play poker. Um, I'm going to raise here because I feel as if these two are pretty tight. And if these guys call, I don't, six, mind. Not bad, I don't mind if they call. Um, yeah, like the only place you could play was the cast. That's where I actually met Lee around that time. I yeah, we should probably mention cash game. Lee is another person that will be part of the poker show. He's away at the moment, but he's going to come on board and join myself and Scott. But yeah, so are you... Was your first? Where was your first live game, Scott? Was it at, at the uh, Cast? It would have been around 2000, 2001, at the Cast uh, Limit. Yeah. Back then, that's all they really had. Wow. Yeah. Um, wow. That's just and um, yeah, uh, played at the Cast a few times when I could. You see, he's 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 probably got something here. I'm starting to get a little bit worried with this this sort of tanking then checking. <laughs> yeah, so well, they only had. Um, um, yeah, they only had limit, um, and yeah, just playing limit um, every now and then, not very often. And then Wapple came in, and that's, I guess, when yeah, he's got a good hand. Uh, he's got a straight flush, something like that. Or better than me. Um, so yeah, and then when Wapple came along, that's when I really started playing like three or four times a week. Yep. Um, the early days of Waffle Still really good. free league or you um, free and, money? and pro and they had like special events and stuff like so I'd go yeah. on a few of them but mostly free. Yeah. And um, playing at the CAS for money most of the time when I did decide to but um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've never been a, a massive player. I've, I, there was a, t- a time that I got uh, made redundant in my job, and I got a big payout, and I decided to be a poker pro for about a week, yeah. two weeks, and I ran it up a little bit in the first week, and then lost a bit in the second week, and realised I had rent due. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was um, the end of that dream. But um, since then, I've just been sort of playing um, online mm. tournaments. You know, online, bit of cash. Yeah. Not really making much at all. Just sort of... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just purely for the fun of it. I yeah, guess. and yeah. Um, the old tournament, at, you know, at pubs and stuff, and APL and things like that. So, you, I think 99, you said, was when you first discovered poker. Mm-hmm. Probably started playing early 2000s. Do you still feel like you're getting better at poker? Are you learning more? Definitely. I think I've probably... See, that's... That's amazing to me. Ten years, well, what is it? Fifteen years, nearly. Yep. Um, and you're still learning more and more about poker. So the depth of the actually, game. I think. I think I've actually learnt more in the last sort of year to eighteen months than maybe the five or ten years before that. Mm, wow. um, yeah, um, and I think a lot of that sort of was to do with. Um, Certain people I've like met and certain people I've talked mm. to about poker and um, uh, and obviously it's more and more on YouTube now. There's a lot more sort yeah. of media. Yeah. J- J- Jason, Jason Somerville's run of art was a big big thing for me yeah. as well that I thought was really good and I guess sort of inspired us to do what we're doing now. And yeah. Like, well, I mean, a few things inspired us. I think. I think yeah. we were just. You see on Facebook so much discussion, and or, I mean, we talk like this whether we've got it recorded or not. Like we're always mm. just chit chatting about poker. So you, I mean, you realise that other people are interested, and we thought we'd just get it on to um, onto the air. The old Jack Two on the butt, mate. Eh? Well, I, 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 are we just have stealing called. blinds here, or what are we doing? Yeah, I mean, these guys haven't called yet. It's quite a um, but see, finally we get the uh, no, no, get the right, three no. bit, then you can just fold. But at least you know, don't you? Yeah. Um, maybe I didn't pay much attention there. Maybe that was a silly bet thinking about because oh, you know, um, he was probably raising anyway. I mean, at least if you raise and then he re raises, you don't want to. Mm. You're on the button. If he just raised to a dollar, you might have just flattered. I mean, you're on the button. Yes, you've got Jack too, but mm. you, might, you, you might still call and then you get yourself in trouble. Yeah, it's um. So sometimes the um the don't raise we'll call it can be uh. I not a profitable thing, but I it can stop you from losing. Raise. I think that came when I <laughs> played the hand for a while, which is yeah. really silly. And something I don't... I don't... I don't... I recommend kiddies at home watching. Is that a danger of online, Scott? Obviously, when you, you fold a hand when you're playing pub poker or even a tournament, you can check your phone, you can sort of talk to a mate or you look around the room or whatever. Online, you fold. You, you're just staring at the screen, aren't you? So it's a do you thing. find you play hands a lot more... Um, online than you would live simply because you're getting bored? Uh, yep, I think that's m- much more of a danger when you're playing online. I mm. mean, um, the great players, of course, yeah, can kind of like separate themselves from that. But I feel like, for example, like if I'm like multi tabling, yep, and I let's say I'm playing a cash game, like a regular Friday night for me would be playing a cash game and maybe playing two or three tournaments, right? Mm. Yeah, I might have four games going on. So, let's say I get knocked out of the tournaments, right? And I'm just playing, and then I'm just on one screen. All of a sudden, I was playing four games and yeah. playing lots of hands, yeah. and now I'm playing only one, like cash game. So, I'm get that's that's a dangerous yeah, period. Obviously. You can get bored then, because you start thinking, I've played hand in a while. Oh yeah, this queen mm. deuce looks alright. This this shot. <laughs> Well, yeah, I wouldn't shove, but see, I'm, I guess I'm it... never going anywhere here. No, obviously. I mean, it's not a bad flop, but was there a chance to maybe raise that and steal it there? Definitely. Or even build? I mean, you, you want to... You see, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of raising here. That, that, but, yeah, I think I will, because I can't really see him. Are we looking at the fact that he's got 11 behind there as well? So it's, I mean... There's lots of cards on the turn that help me. That's not one of them. Slows down. I mean, there's five in the pot. He's got about what has he got? Ten dollars. He could be trapping, but he could this. He could also be drawing, and that's why I feel as if we're sort of putting in queen ten, something like that. You know, that's. I think that's a good card for me. Yeah. I mean, he has to show it. I mean, yeah. He's not going to check. Yeah. You know, see, I reckon we can just check behind you. Would you? I mean. 
Yeah. Gets back to, I mean, yeah, see, so you, you're right, he had the, uh, actually, he didn't really have anything there. Mm, but, yeah. shot, was it? but see, if you're going to bet that river, I, I, I don't see the point in that no. because if he's got six dollars, his so first act on the river. Definitely like a raise, but he's. Mm, I've got to play behind me. I could raise there though. That he's definitely tilting, and oh, now I can sh put him in if he bets this. Yeah, I mean you have to, don't you? Yeah. Make him. Make him earn it. And you're obviously never going to be dead here. I'm never folding. Like, I've got plenty of hours. I've got two overs. I've got open-ended. And he's obviously... So you put him all in. Yeah. Oh, he's got some... Wow. Ah. Just, just run around a book. Ah. Yeah, I mean... It, I think it's a good play, though. I mean, you could have yeah. probably called and seen the turn. Yeah. But you also I mean, he had seven six there, so he, like my I read him as you know, and he's weak, weak and, he's he not... and he was weak, like but the, he bet pre flop with that hand. It's actually a pretty good call from him really, I mean. Yeah, it was. But it's a call he probably only makes because he's got six dollars left. And I yeah. think he knows he can just rebuy. So when you get to I mean we're only playing twenty five like, sorry, ten twenty five at the moment, but once you're under ten dollars, you're really just thinking about just shoving, aren't you? I mean, you're not. So, is that something you can utilize? I mean, you, when you're up against someone that has less than ten dollars, mm. you're probably thinking, look, they're going to get in with with whatever. They're not really. They're trying to double up. If not, they're just going to rebuy. So, do you generally just put them all in because you know that's their thought process, or? Um, I think you can. You can work depending on what you have. You can sort of work it both ways. You can mm. see right now. I mean, he's got three dollars, or nearly four dollars. He's some well, he folds there. But see, if you I'm, were to get involved in a pot with him, yeah. I mean, I've now got position. I think. Um, I think like if you've got like a good drawing hand, there's like there's a mm. good sort of argument for just calling and seeing a flop and then shoving. Yeah. Um, but. Also, if you've got a hand where you're not going anywhere with, like sort of maybe a pocket pair or... Mm, I don't like this. Yeah, see, I just run away. Yeah, I... He had a crack, it didn't work out. Yeah. I think sometimes ego plays a part. I mean, it, there's no shame in folding even if you have that. If you get raised, alright, he, he probably got a better hand, just let's yeah. get out of the hand. There's no point yeah, just I'll calling just because, oh damn, he's three bet me, I have to call and try and beat him. Like, if he's got a better hand, he's, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, well, I mean, Especially you know, if you were bluffing, I mean. And I don't think the C bet there is all that bad because you, you, I mean, I wouldn't C bet every time, but the fact that I did have like a draw to the flush, like, um, there was lots of cards hmm. that sort of helped me on the turn. I, I mean, like, I'm going to slow down a bit because. Is this purely really an image follow this Yeah. One? Yeah, pretty much. Like, cause there's, uh, that I think that most of them are seeing me as a bit of a crazy <laughs> cat right now. Which, yeah. I mean, I am, and I'm. I'm, I'm not I guess gonna... we're also trying to play hands as well because we've got it recorded. You might play a little bit tighter. If it wasn't, I say. Are we raising here, or are we? We're in position. You so assume. I think, I think I can call and then like. So, yeah, I don't know now. It's a weird that spot. Was, yes, yeah. I mean, you don't know now. I mean, yeah. if you had three betting and then you've got sort of the betting. Um, uh, maybe I'll just wait for a better place. Yeah. See, I think that's fine. I, yeah. What'd you lose there? A dollar or something? There's, there's no shame in sort of just getting out. But I think the call, I think the call is bad. I think, I think it's either a raise or a fold, probably. Hmm. But. If I had something like ace eight suited or ace yeah. jack or king jack or queen jack, then maybe a, a fold a call would be okay. Yeah. But just like an ace eight off suit, like I mean the problem is if you ace hit the ace, ace, ace high is either good or it's not. And if you do hit the ace, you've only got to kick it, don't you? So it's or something like this. Like if I had this on the last hand, a call would be good. But on this particular hand, I think a raise here is. Like not bad because I'm calling that raise. If he raises to seventy five, I'm calling, right? Mm. 
So I might as well raise it, and then I have. And I mean, uh, ten seven suited. If it's gonna hit, you're gonna want money in there, aren't you? Because they're gonna it. put you on ten seven suited. You've taken the momentum. You've taken control of the hand. You're in position, and they might just fold, which they did. Mm. So I mean, eight dollars up so far. We're doing all right. We were a little bit more up. A king on the river on that last then that play book would have been nice, but. We didn't get it, but was, we're up. Eight dollars, you can't turn your nose up at that. At least this wasn't the shortest video of all time. <laughs> I was thinking about what would have happened if we lost all the money uh, first go. Should I have a go? Yeah, you take over. You can turn, gonna, turn into I'm the... I'm just uh, going to have a look at how long we've been going. It's a three, seven and a half. It's a typical uh, first stand for me. I'm just going to get rid of junk like that. Alright, we are going to stop the video here. Yep, going to take a break. And we will be back with part two. So please everyone, like us on Facebook, on the Poker Show, um, on Twitter with the hashtag um, Ask Poker Show. Um, ask us some questions for our next videos and please get involved and we will be up on the radio hopefully in the near future but we will be back on continuing this game in a few minutes and yeah till then goodbye